Marshall. Welcome to the world of terrifying imagination. Make yourself comfortable for the moment. You know, evil has a vitality that defies time. Its power can be curbed, denied, defeated, but only temporarily. And when it returns, its force is more malevolent than ever. We've all been to dark places and felt the presence of evil. And we've all seen things beyond our power of understanding. But, like Tom Fairley, we feel there are explanations for everything. Or are there? Cold, bitter cold, the smell, decayed. The truck from there. Volga, did your men find anything else? Just the glass. It's curious, Tom. I don't see anything, Pass. Yes, you do, Tom, but it doesn't mean anything to you. We weren't here when we found Flip. The air was flattened. It was the same. Strange discoloration. What's all this got to do with Frank here? I don't know. But I promise you, I'll find out. Our mystery drama, Frankenstein Revisited, was written especially for the Radio Mystery Theater by Milt Wissoff and stars Michael Wager and Leon Janney. I'll be back shortly with Act One. friendly people who make these broadcasts possible to the monsters who will make it impossible for you to sleep. I hope. Our drama opens on a story conference in the Madison Avenue bar. It will end, I assure you, in terror and fear. Over here. Here, Tom. You sure picked a great place for our meeting. Yeah, well, you're late. I didn't have to fight my way to the mob at the bar. I might have been here sooner. What's on your mind, Frank? Well, I've been looking for a special that we can use as a springboard for our new horror series. And what's more appropriate than the old Frankenstein legend? You mean Boris Karloff and his magic electrodes? No, Tom. Not the hokey monster brought to life by the mad scientist. That was cooked up by Mary Shelley. It doesn't rate with the gothic tale everyone in Germany knows about the infamous Baron von Frankenstein and his terrible death. It's got all the elements of a superb spook show. What's more, this is the 400th anniversary of the Baron's death. So what? So this old buddy. The monster is reputed to return every century looking for fresh blood. Uh, it won't work, Frank. I was stationed near Darmstadt, only a stone's throw away from the Frankenstein Castle after World War I. I've seen the place. It doesn't look like much. Even the burial crypt has been turned into a potato cellar. Well, how about the incidents you mentioned at cocktails the other night? That's what really put me onto the show. Oh, those killings I blabbed about had nothing to do with any monster. The police were satisfied the murders were committed by a fanatical group of neo-Nazis who called themselves the werewolves. Who's going to be interested in a defunct castle on an anniversary nobody celebrates? Well, they will this year. We're going to billboard the 400th anniversary with a gala festival. Well, who's going to show? The peasants used to have a fit when I even mentioned the Baron's name. And that was almost 30 years ago. Oh, they'll come. We're going to have sausage and beer, fireworks, and a dandy house of horrors to set the stage for our countdown to midnight. A fake documentary, paper mache, razzle dazzle. The storyline is sound. It should scare the heck out of people. Now, if you don't want to direct the special, I'll all speak right, all right, stop me in. Good. Come on, square with me, Tom. Why all the bull about the potato cellar? You don't want to go back there, do you? No, Frank, I don't like the place. Then why not back out? I don't oh, feel you're Frank, leveling. Frank, I want to keep on directing for the network. I won't let anything stand in my way. Not you, not the gray hairs creeping up on me. Not even Frankenstein and his blasted castle. Just let me leave this one thought with you. 
We'll see how much you enjoy the scene when midnight approaches. I'd like to hear the tune you whistle when the wind howls. Now, Mr. Larkin. Mr. Larkin here. Oh, so good to see you again. And you too, Mr. Shelley. Oh, uh, Klaus, I'd like you to meet our little company. This is Eileen Garrett, who will play the Baron's ward, Laura. And the charming one, I'm sure. Him, I like. And Flip Johnson, also known in the industry as The Voice. He'll do the descriptive background at the festival and the castle. The interviews with the man on the street. He will also double as Rolf, the suitor for Eileen's hand. Uh, that won't take much acting. In that case, you might do. Oh. Uh, this is Klaus Folger, our local representative, who will be our strong right hand during the production. Uh, when do we meet Mr. Helmut? Very soon. You'll find he makes an admirable bow. That's oh, very strange. I've never heard of him. Oh, he's quite a well-known actor, I assure you. Now I think it's time to leave for the castle. It's not the plaza, but I hope you'll find it comfortable. Well, I'm sure we will. Uh, who goes with whom? Well, there's enough room in the limousine for all of you. The baggage will follow in a small wagon. <laughs> Trap. Yeah, how about you, Klaus? Aren't you coming with us? I know, Frank, I will see that the baggage is not consigned to mention by mistake. But I will uh, join you later. I wonder what Mr. Helmut, the Baron, is like. I have a feeling. Oh, Eileen, now you sound like gloom and doom fairly. He's probably just another average, run-of-the-mill weirdo. You've done a great job, Klaus. Even the crew is happy in the trailers. I like my room fine. It's a bit drafty when the drapes are open, but the comforters will keep me warm, I'm sure. Mm, how about this lunch, huh? I haven't had wild boar since the last time I was here. Oh, oh, is that what it was? It tasted like a uh, suckling pig. <laughs> the secret to the marinade trip. I see. Klaus, why don't you get the ball rolling? The details on the Frankenstein legend. Oh, it's not a complicated story. The hated aristocrat who exercised all the prerogatives of his position in this village almost 400 years ago. Unmerciful beatings, torture, and death for what he considered affronts to his person. This was his home. Hmm, be it ever so humble. The Baron lived here with his ward, Laura, but he was a thoroughly evil man and hardly behaved toward her like an uncle should. Tomorrow is the anniversary of the Baron's death. 400 years ago, the Baron had a spectacular scene in the castle with Laura and her suitor Rolf. He mounted his horse and rode off into the woods. Someone or something urged him from his horse and tore him to pieces. And the legend says that every century the monster that killed the Baron returns. Uh, that's about it. And we'll be doing this direct from the scene tomorrow night. We'll have a short run for this evening. Uh, look for places to spot mics and pick out the cushions. Uh, Flip will stroll through the woods and give us a little ad-lib color. Can there be a crowd there? Not in the woods, Flip, baby. Just you and the Baron and the other monster. Oh, how come? Because no one in this area will venture into the woods after dark. And tomorrow night, the anniversary eve, they may not even stir out of their homes. Is that right, Klaus? Possibly. The people here are very superstitious. Oh, are they? Why don't you explain what happened a hundred years ago on the last anniversary? I was not yet born. Yeah, but you know what happened? A man was found dead. Dead, Klaus? He was butchered, wasn't he? Torn to shreds? And his head was found at the foot of the hill. <laughs> This is it. Well, I hate to admit it, Klaus, but Tom may have a point about the castle grounds. It is kind of tacky. Well, I'm not sure I agree. Physically, it's not much, but the decay, the, the feeling I get, I, I'm really frightened. Oh, come on now, Princess. You're letting that creep's tail get under your skin. There's nothing here but battered stone and dirt. Reminds me of my plan. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I, I get bad vibes. It reminds me of a trip I took to Central America years ago. The ruined pyramids, the bloody altars, where thousands were sacrificed to bloodthirsty gods. It, it had the same aura of evil. You are most perceptive, Miss Garrett. Evil is everywhere. Oh. Who are you? I am Paul Helmer. He will play the Baron in our production. How did you know my name? No mystery about that. You are the only actress in the cast. 
sorry. Oh, forgive me, Mr. Helmet. You came about me so suddenly. Yeah, well, where did you come from? I, I never saw from you. From the Baron's bedroom. A passage leads directly here. The place is honeycombed with such passages. But there are no other cars around. How did you... I know? arrived here several days ago. You've been here several days alone? Oh, I don't think I'd enjoy that. I like to get into character, Miss Garrett. Well, now that we're all together, I'd like to flip to walk through the woods and give us his impressions. Oh, swell, off the top of my head. Exactly. Anything you see and feel, don't force it. I want this played low-key. Sound natural. It'll help build the finish. He's all hooked up, Frank. He can start at any time. Now, listen, are you going to tape this? Yes, but only so that we have a record of it. Tomorrow is for keeps. Go, Tiger. Get the demons in the woods. Uh-uh. Well, I play the scene better if Eileen kept me company. <laughs> oh, there's no moon slip. And I'd hardly call this a romantic setting. Ah, oh, romance is where you find it, Mama. <laughs> is everything set, Klaus? Yes. My assistant is about a hundred yards in. Flip should be just about there now. I don't want to inter- interfere, Frank, but just what's going on? A surprise for our boy. It should make Flip less flip. Yeah, we we have our men play slightly off the path. We make small noises, sounds, you know, create an atmosphere. Does Flip know? Of course not. That would defeat our purpose. Flip reacts beautifully. It will all be a surprise to him. Frank, that's a dirty trick. Suppose something happens. Oh, now what can possibly happen? It's just a small forest, trees, and grass. Well, I don't like it. Flip? No use, Miss Garrett. He cannot hear you. Hey, Klaus, give your man a cue and bring Flip in. Now I'm about a quarter of a mile into Baron Frankenstein's woods. It's pretty much Dullesville so far. <laughs> I was just thinking how strange it is. Haven't seen any animals around. Wait a minute. I think I just heard something. Probably a rabbit. I hope. Hey. That appears again. Weird. Everything's so deathly still, and then suddenly just the faintest whisper of a sound, like, like something dragging. Hey, who's there? Who do you think you're fighting me? Well, okay, I'll go in after tongues in trees, books in running brooks, and sermons in stones. Obviously, Flip saw and heard a great deal more in Frankenstein's woods. Or did he? Perhaps we shall know more when I return shortly with Act Two. I'm giving it up. Giving up what? Smoking. Congratulations. I'm doing it for you and the kids. For me and the kids? But we don't smoke. You're wrong. I saw this Lung Association message. You know what? We smokers are making you non-smokers smokers just like us. Whatever are you talking about? I'm talking about secondhand smoking. The Lung Association says I'm doing myself in as if I didn't know. But my smoke is trouble for everybody in my neighborhood. Do you realize every puff I smoke, I'm puffing out a smoke screen of carbon monoxide, nicotine, benzopyrene, to say nothing of hydrocarbons. You, you sound positively poisonous. I feel poisonous. I'm quitting. For me, darling. Yes, and for me, darling, I want to be loved. Your Lung Association says the smoker who quits, quits for more than one person. He's clearing the air for everybody. You might say, it's a matter of love and breath. of in our philosophy? Is there something in Frankenstein's woods that defies rational explanation? Or was Flip Johnson the victim of his own imagination? Perhaps if we push on with our little tale, we shall have the answer. Flip, Flip, are you all right? Well, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I don't know. I, I was just strolling along and 
Wham, the lights went out. What did you see? I, I, nothing. But we heard you, Flip. The eyes, you said, the eyes. Now, wait, wait a minute. What are you talking about? I saw nothing. I... We have it on tape. You complained about the cold. In the strange light, the eyes that burned bright. You said it was impossible. All I remember is waking up and there you were. I mean, standing right over me. Hey, what did your men find, Klaus? Let me show you, Frank. Now, here we are. The point where Flip started to run. And you can see the prints. Now we follow along for a few yards. And here we have... Iron Circle. In the middle... Discovered. As if the grass had been frozen. Frank, is this something that you... We had nothing to do with that, did we, Klaus? That's right. I admit we arranged a few effects, but nothing more. No, we would have had to have special refrigerating equipment. Well, the zero to make such marks. How do you like it, folks? It's fantastic. Instant carnival by Frank Rockin. No, 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 Tom. Give credit where it's due. Klaus engineered the whole setup. This is not so difficult. We have a long tradition of festivals here. I could almost enjoy this if only... Don't forget it, Ivan. Nothing really happened. Flip just got panicky and ran. He fell, blacked out. He'll be all right. Uh, Klaus, are we set in the house of horrors? Yeah, we can go at any time. Good. You all know the routine. You already have good coverage in town and at the zoo. Let's zero in on the big scene. All right. We'll pick up Flip and Eileen as the Baron's ward, Laura. Are you Flip or her suitor, Ralph? And you meet her at the House of Horrors. I'll take over, Frank. You don't mind. I'm not doing my credits. I was just counting on that, Tom. The show's all yours. You ready, Klaus? All set, Mr. Fairley. All right, slide it, Klaus. Scene 12, check one. And action. The Baron is not expected before tonight, dearest. Not until quite late. I think I shall stay here forever. It is so enchanting. I'm sick of formality, Ralph. I'm bored with the same walls, the same faces, the same small talk. And the same guardian? I feel almost free here. And then why not leave? Come away with me. Once when I was a child, my father took me to such a fair. He filled me with cakes and pink drinks. Yes, and you always got sick. Oh, but it was worth it. I enjoyed it, sir. Oh, look, Laura, look. This is the House of Horrors. It doesn't look so horrible. All tinsel and paint. Come inside with me. All right, cut. Hey, that was right on the nose, kids. It's a perfect first take. Oh, good. All right, that's it for now. We'll pick up the woods near the castle at eight tonight. Just take it easy until then. Uh, Klaus, you'll have your crew setting up at seven, right? At seven, Mr. Fairley. Honey? You want to hurry? No, no, why? Well, how about a chance for the House of Horrors? Give it a five dollar tour? Oh, I could use the exercise. <laughs> Good. You pick the passage, we'll find it. It's the tea, jibba tea, zippa tea, bam. Sam it is. Oh, this reminds me of my first date. Oh, well, first dates are creepy. Mine had a wall eye. And mine took me to the tunnel of love. Our first kiss was an orthodontist nightmare. Braces rubbing against braces. We sent out sparks that lit the tunnel. <laughs> it's too bad we're past the braces stage. <laughs> you know, Tom, that's the first time I've heard you laugh since we started this trip. There's nothing much to laugh at. Was it that bad? Yeah. I get the feeling I'm reliving the whole thing. I don't know why. Well, I'm a pretty good listener, Tom. Want to talk about it? Why not? It was 45 and the war was just over. We'd been through some rough times and we were sent here for R&R. R&R? &R. And rest and recreation. Oh. Seemed like heaven at first. So peaceful. No noise, no bloodshed. But it turned sour. Some of my buddies got blown away. Did they ever discover who did it? No, mm, not a clue. The army command blamed the neo-Nazis, the werewolves. Mm. The townspeople were convinced it had something to do with the mad baron. It's a bad scene. Mm. And you? I believe what I see. But it did shake me. I'm glad Flip is all right. So am I. But not for the same reason. Oh, Tom. 
you the marriage of friends. Casual friends. That's the best news I've had in days. What's that up ahead? Looks like a treadle. Well, what are we waiting for? Treadles are for treading. Step on it. <laughs> That's one heck of an effect. The barren and non-living rubber expanding before your very eyes. This would be sensational at Macy's Parade. <laughs> Cross didn't overlook a thing. It should go over big with the tourists and the people in the village. On the contrary, after the first person sees this, it will keep them away. Oh, where did you come from? What are you doing here? Just visiting. Oh, you startled us. I know. I seem to have the same effect on the people in town. You, uh... You know, you look familiar to me. I've seen you before, but I can't remember where. Shadows and half-light make strange impressions. I wonder if you can give me a hand, Mr. Fairley. With what? Something I found in a recess back there. Okay, leave the way. What is it? I don't know. Signs of digging. I was about to see what it was when I heard your voices. Here. Hey, you're right, Thomas. Those are fresh marks. <laughs> Don't come any closer, I mean. What is it? A wild boar, I think. What's left of it? It's not a pretty sight. It's literally been ripped apart. be all over tonight. No, no. No, we'll finish the rest back in the States. You can count on that. What was that all about? Yeah, the town council. They want us out as soon as possible. They were polite but firm. Too many things been happening. Flip and then the dead boar. The word's getting around and it's becoming amplified in each telling. Did your visit to town pay off? I think so. It was tough getting permission to go through the old records. The clerk of the city hall was a perfect bureaucrat. He insisted on an application countersigned by his boss. I threatened to go to the burgomaster, and he caved in. Well, how about the newspaper? They were reluctant, too, but uh, greedy. A few marks and the right palm paved the way. Well... All right, see for yourself. Here's a reproduction of the paper's front page a hundred years ago. Take a squint of the guy who was separated from his head. It's uh, pretty well faded. Look at the eyes in the forehead. It could be, I suppose. And here's a print of an oil painting of the original Baron von Frankenstein. I believe mm -hmm. Mr. Fairley thinks the picture resembles me. All right, Helmut, where the devil did you come from? <laughs> this old castle is honeycombed with secret passages. And you just keep wandering through them like you know where you are. Hmm? I have been exploring them for days. You know, Tom, there is a resemblance. A trick of your imagination. I knew I'd seen you somewhere before. You're talking nonsense, gentlemen. I could not possibly have been here a century ago, let alone 400 years. How about 30 years ago? I was only a child then. What about your family? I have none. They were killed in the war. Does that satisfy you, Mr. Larkin? I don't know about Frank, but it sure doesn't clear things up for me. Stay inside until midnight, Helmut. You understand? Perfectly. And stay out of the passages until the show's been recorded. I don't want any more surprises. is beginning to get me. I'd be glad to get it over with. Dinner is ready. We'll eat in here tonight. Just as long as it isn't bore. Hey, uh, where's I mean? She has a headache. I'd better go up and see if I can do anything for her. It's not necessary. I have sent some food up to her. I have some bad news. Three members of the crew quit. They were all as frightened as the townspeople. Bad news? <laughs> That's all we need. Well, I have replaced them, but with such short notice, I'm afraid I've not been able to run up the most competent technicians. I don't imagine what's happened today helped much. Well, that's all right, Klaus. I know you've done your best, and we'll just keep our fingers crossed. Hey, um, pass the salad, will you, Tom? 
Nothing stops your appetite, does it, Fred? No, I'm just a growing boy, Tom. I need fuel for my engines. <laughs> what? What's that? It's Charlene. It's just behind that wall. Impossible. There's nothing there. You keep trying the wall. There may be a passage there. I'm going to a roar. I'm with you. Look, the place is a mess. Everything's happened to Eileen. I know, Tom. Look. Footsteps in blood. They lead uh, up to the panel. All right, let's knock a hole in it. It's no use. That's oak, several inches thick. Here. Press this car. What? Where did you come from, Helmut? Right, we'll talk about that later. Hey, look, it's moving. And here she is. Eileen. Oh. Eileen. Oh, oh. Man, honey. Oh. Here. Oh, that's good. She's coming around. Are you all right, Eileen? Oh. I think so. What happened? I was lying in bed, trying to pull myself together. It was dark and cool. Suddenly, I felt something in the room. I, I sat upright, but I couldn't see anything. I, I knew it was that. I stepped off the bed, felt something warm and sticky. I panicked and ran. Then I knew I was being held. And then... Nothing. You, you find it. I suppose so. Just as I was going out, I heard my name. Who was it? I don't know. It was just a whisper. A nightmare, perhaps? A nightmare? With a German accent. <laughs> Robert Penn Warren wrote, The nightmare stumbles past, and you have heard it fumble at your door before it whimpers and is gone. It acts like the old hound that used to snuffle your door and moan. But who, your host inquires, has heard it speak with accent foreign? We shall return shortly with more on the castle of bad dreams in Act Three. This is Mel Blank, and voices are my business. In Warner Brother cartoons, you probably know me as the crazy little character. Daffy Duck. <laughs> or, uh, Pinky, 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 Pig. Or, me, Bunch Bunny Duck. We all have a voice in matters that affect us in our community, and it's necessary to speak out to get the best possible community services. One community tradition which really deserves vocal support is the library. The library has been serving up all kinds of information ever since this country began. After all, you can get thousands of voices in the library's books, on film, records, and tapes. And you can borrow these voices freely. But the library can't give you such good service without a lot of vocal and personal support from you. This means you need to write or call your community officials and speak up for the library. It's all in the, in the air, folks. The library. <laughs> a public service message from the American Library Association and this station. mount it can make. It carries you unwillingly beyond anguish and terror through deadly whispers and pools of blood. But oh, the relief when it's over. Let's return now to Act Three and the end of the ride. Uh, how's Eileen doing, Tom? Physically fine, but she's as tight as a drum. Now look, why don't we get the police in, No Frank? way. We've got two strikes against us in town now. Call the authorities anywhere through. We've gone too far. We certainly have. We're right up against the point of no return. But the production is almost... Oh, finished. damn the production! What does it take to convince you, corpses? You're being melodramatic, Tom. Nothing's really happened yet. So Flip saw something and a boar was slaughtered. Did you see the condition Eileen's room was in? And how did she get into the passageway? Surely you've heard of sleepwalking. And I suppose she dreamed up the mangled animal in the blood, huh? No. But so far, no one's been hurt. Yeah, so far. And nothing is going to happen. Well, we've got everybody on the alert. There are guards all around the place. Klaus has brought some extra men in. We've taken every precaution. Every precaution except the most obvious one. Now, let's get out of here, Frank, before it's too late. Not until the show's wrapped up. Well, come in. What is it, Helmut? 
Bulger says we're ready. Oh, you used the door this time, Helmet. What happened? The passageway blocked? Uh, why the get up? You won't be on camera, you know. Just a few replicas of the Baron's wardrobe to help me get into character. Authentic, I can assure you. You're taking this role quite seriously. I take all my roles that way. And only one way to act. If that's all, I'll be going. Okay, uh, tell them Mr. Fairley will be right there. What's up, Frank? I should be splitting too. Now, look, Tom, I don't feel there are any grounds for your suspicions, but well, I've had some checks made on Helmut's past. What he's done, where he comes from. I expect a report any moment now. That should clear the air. I hope so. Now, all I ask is let's get the job done. Don't let your feelings get in the way. I won't. But if the news is sour, don't keep it from me, will you? In this case, ignorance can be disaster. Oh, boy, it's getting cold out here, Tom. What's taking them so long? They're almost set. How do you feel, Alan? About like Flip. Cold and miserable. Oh, I could use a fireplace and a hot toddy. Uh, that's just what you'll have as soon as we finish this scene. It's short, but uh, not sweet. Now, you and Flip, as the Baron's ward and your suitor, are returning to the castle. You got it? You're frightened? And Flip is trying to comfort you. Ah, good. That's one scene I'll truly enjoy. Mr. Fairy, why didn't you answer me on the talk back? I didn't hear anything. The equipment must be out. We're set to go. Oh, good. Where's Frank Larkin? I thought he was with you. He left us some time ago. Did he say where he was going? I assumed he was coming here. He did say something strange. What was that? Something about being convinced at last. Does that mean anything to you? It sure does, Klaus. Send your men through the woods and the castle grounds. Oh, look, I think we're just wasting our time. Let's go back to the castle and wait. He'll be along. You can go back, Flip. I'm not going to give up until we find Frank. Oh. We shall have to cut the search and Klaus's crew to hear from. Mr. Perry, Mr. Perry, Mr. Larkin. We found him. Come quickly. This way, Mr. Perry, in the clearing. Is he hurt? Yes. I think badly. There. Frank. Frank. Are you all right? He cannot hear you, I'm afraid. Oh, but he's still breathing. Get an ambulance. Help us on the way. Was he conscious at all? No. Oh, no, no. Don't try to talk, Frank. We're here. You're going to be all right. Oh, Frank, Frank. Just lie quietly. Don't come near me. Don't touch me. Don't. Shivering. Throw a blanket on you. Who did this, Frank? Cold. Damp. The smell. Who was it? Cold. Bitter. Cold. The smell. Decayed. Frank. Frank. Is he. No, 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 no. He's unconscious. We'll talk to him later. Did your men find anything else? Just the glass. It is curious, Tom. What? Right, I don't see anything. Yes, you do, but it doesn't mean anything to you. You weren't here when we found Flip. The arrows flattened in the same strange discoloration. What's all this got to do with Frank? I don't know. But I promise you, I'll find out. <laughs> Listen, I'm calling about Mr. Frank Larkin. The patient in room 305. You understand me? Oh. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to shout. I see. Thank you. Tom, what did they say? Well, his condition is stable. That's what every hospital says unless you're dying. Do they expect him to be there long? Just a few days. You know, it's all so strange. So many things have happened. Flip, you... Now, Frank, but nobody's been really hurt badly. There are a few mangled animals. Yes, well, that's what's bugging me. The animals get slaughtered, but people are more frightened than hurt. Except Frank's close shaved. But why? It doesn't make any sense. 
Anything powerful enough to mash some poor defenseless creature surely could do more damage than that. Well, maybe there's no connection between any of the things that have happened. Oh, that'd be part of coincidence on coincidence. I don't believe it, and I don't think Frank did either. After he got that phone call he was waiting for. Well, then why don't you call the police? For the same reason that Frank didn't. But you kept begging Frank to delay the production. Oh, not now. I'm going to finish it tonight, for Frank's sake. But I'm going to be sure that whoever's behind this pays the price. And how will you do that, Mr. Fairley? I guess you tried the door once and didn't care for it, huh? It is easier to use the passageway. You didn't answer my question? I know I didn't. The reason is simple. I don't know yet. But I will before tonight's over. You mentioned a phone call Mr. Larkin received. Yes. If only I knew what it was. Perhaps I can help you. How? The telephone lines into the castle were a special installation. An exact record is kept at the company of every call made from and into the building. Well, then all we have to do is call the company and find out. Not exactly. They will give it to the police, however. That's out. Why? Please, please, Tom, call them in. And the next time, wh whoever's doing this may forget the difference between man and beast. She's right, Mr. Fairley. You do not know whom you are dealing with. Do you? <laughs> I'll be the same. I will see you shortly, when the fun begins. Okay, Klaus, let's get some levels. Get Flick to set a few lines. We need some levels. Okay, okay, this is Flip Johnson in the burial crypt underneath the Frankenstein castle. That's enough, fine. Thank you. Now, stand by. See if you can sharpen up the sound, Klaus. Yeah, I will try. All right, Eileen, you get to the Baron's room in the castle. Helmet's there already. We'll do your scene first. Are you all right? Oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. Don't worry about a thing. We've got everything under control. I'll see you later. Klaus, pick up helmet. Son of Eileen's on her way. Yeah. Helmut? Helmut? Mr. Fairley would like to speak with you. Get on the talk back. Helmut? Are you there, Helmut? Get to the talk back. Give me that, will you? Helmut? This is Tom Fairley. I'm here, Tom, but no sign of Helmut. Where the devil is he? I don't know. Oh, damn. Ask one of the men outside the door to check. You stay put. He says he saw Helmut heading for the crypt some time ago. Klaus, see if you can find him. I'll handle things here. Yeah. Flip, do you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear, Tom. You ready for me now? Have you seen Helmut? Nope. He's supposed to be here? Um, just stand by. Eileen, have they found Helmut yet? No. What's going on? I don't know. But... I think we had better go to the crypt scene first. I've seen through the passageway, but there are no signs of helmets. I guess you're right. Flip? Yeah, what now? Start your narration, and if you spot helmet, let me know, huh? Okay. This is Flip Johnson in the burial crypt underneath the Frankenstein castle. It is said that every century, the monster that slew Baron von Frankenstein returns to feed his bloodlust. And every century, the man returns from his grave to meet his fate again. We are less than a minute from the hour of midnight, when all this is supposed to take place. The question is, what will happen here tonight? In just a few seconds, we shall know. This burial crypt is one solid room cut out of deep rock. Behind the crypt is a tunnel leading to other burial forms and to passages that have never been truly explored. It is reputed that a thousand years of Frankenstein lie buried here. But, uh, wait a minute, cut it, Tom. I, I have to stop. Listen, are you picking up any sounds? Yes, something that sounds like dragging. Do you see anything? Oh, well, no, but the sounds are getting louder. I, Tom, are you trying to pull something? Well, no, Flip, believe me. Why would I try well, to pull it? Something seems to be dragging. I hear breathing. At least that's where I think it is. It's, it, it's getting cold and damp in here. And I, oh, oh, I smell something horrible. Get out, Flip. Get out as fast as you can. All right, close in, men. Get into the crypt as fast as you can. I want every man in there. I can see them now. Eyes. Evil. Bright as cat's eyes. Glowing. And enormous. Oh. Oh, God, help me. I can't move. It's here. It's here. Who are you? Oh, 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 oh. This is the crypt, Tom. Someone's heading into the passageway. Over there, I think it's Helmut. What about Flip? It's not good. His throat's been crushed. Oh, He's no. not breathing. Somebody stay with Flip. The rest of you go after... 
Whatever is in that passageway. Here. Stop. Stop, Helmut. Don't move. He's, he's gone. What do you mean he's gone? He disappeared. Vanished. It was thin air. This is goodbye, my friends. Yes, and I can't say I'm sorry to go. Tell me, what will you do with the tapes? They'll make a show out of them. Add a few scenes, and we'll be ready to send some shivers down our listeners' spines. The publicity should help. I suppose so. But I can't help wishing it hadn't come at such a price. Poor Flip. It was a costly show. Klaus, we've been sparring around for quite a while now. Let's stop avoiding the subject. Who is Helmut? An actor. That is all I know. But without a past, the report I received was completely blank except for his acting credits. Nothing. He was just an actor. Obsessed with the role. Do you really think so, Klaus? What else can I think? Then how do you explain what happened in the crypts? After he attacked and killed Flip? You and your man closed in on him? And he vanished. Right before your eyes. But there must be an explanation. If you know every inch of the castle and the grounds, every secret passageway. Then you don't think he met the fate of the mad baron? There were no signs of his remains. Just some flattened, burned out blades of grass. It's an unbelievable climax for a legend. Legends have no climax. They go on and on. Drop us a line when you find out what really happened. I promise. But if you don't hear from me soon, you may have to wait another century for the fact. Since we don't have 100 years to spare, we'll just have to make up our own minds about Paul Helmut. Was he the infamous Baron von Frankenstein brought back to life? Or was he, uh, and I don't mean to be redundant, merely a crazed actor? I'll be back shortly. There is no need to look for a supernatural source of evil has shown himself capable of every wickedness. But regardless of where it arises, evil has a vitality beyond time. Its power can be stemmed, but it will return. Our cast included Michael Wager, Leon Janney, Ralph Bell, E.D. Jester, and William Redfield. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. She ran out into the moor without a cloak. But Heathcliff's horse was not in the stable, and no one knew where he had gone. Catherine returned after midnight in the midst of a thunderstorm, soaked to the skin, and coming down with a severe chill. Miss Catherine, you must let me help you to bed. He's gone, Nelly. He's gone. And my nightmares are coming true. You'll feel better when you have some sleep. I'll never sleep again. I've been abandoned. Oh, it's just like my dreams. I saw myself tapping on the window, begging. Let me in. Let me in. Oh, hush, child. And no one answered. And my hand broke through the glass, so the blood was running down my arm. Oh, get the blood stains off, Nelly. Get the blood stains off. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>